I thought Silly Season was done and dusted, but no, it's back with a vengeance. But you must take heed, Traveller. What I'm about to share with you is nothing but pure Twitter gossip. It's something that just swirled up randomly yesterday. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you will be thinking it's quite cap as the young'uns say. Much like how you can get a cap at the Law of Yes store, link below. First off, it's this barnstormer of a rumour which has something to do with McLaren, which has no basis whatsoever in my opinion, but it's too bonkers for me to keep to myself on Twitter. This user, Fifth Driver, showcases the rumour that Audi's new management, this part is true mind you, there is a new chairman of the board at Audi, Gernot Dullner replacing Marcus Deussmann as the chairman of the board of Audi AG in September, this change in leadership may or may not like the idea of them putting in loads and loads of money money into a Formula 1 project that may or may not work. This uncertainty might be a money pit, and right now Audi is trying to reassess its budget and may want to pull away from this project and sell its stake currently in the Salva Group, which is around 25% or so. It could be a quick sale and an unlocking of cash. Who might be buying then? Might it be a chance for Andretti to get onto the grid via a buyout perhaps? I mean, it wouldn't come cheap, mind you, and they wouldn't be a controlling member of the actual group. But you'd be wrong. It's none other than the former Formula One team, Toyota. This time, with their Gazoo racing brand, and, uh, Toyota Gazoo. <laughs> it's funny to say, but they are a legitimately good racing team. But still, what? This is off the back a few weeks ago, McLaren signing the Toyota WEC driver, Ryo Hirakawa, as a development driver for them. Who is Ryo Hirakawa? Is this like a Sakon Yamamoto or Yuji Ide sort of thing? Just a random Japanese driver who doesn't deserve to have a super license? Oh, no, 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 no. This guy is good. Legitimately good. The rumor implies that he would be one of the new Toyota drivers, having had experience in Super Formula and Super GT. The other driver being Ritomo Miyata, who won this year's Super Formula title ahead of Liam Lawson, and is currently leading the top class of Super GT, the GT500, with one race to go, winning two titles in the same season. That's pretty crazy. These two drivers are pretty credible. This is not going to be a super aguri sort of a thing. And you'll never guess who the team principal is. It's none other than Kamui Kobayashi. Who would have seen that coming? Well, okay, this may be a bit logical because he did used to drive for the Sauber team back in the day. This rumor continues with the notion that they have a good choice of reserve driver. It could be either Brendan Hartley, Sebastian Buemi, and yes, Nick DeVries. Nick DeVries is part of the Toyota WEC project in some capacity. And also the pattern, they are ex-Red Bull drivers. They would also give McLaren, as their partner in this venture, an engine supply, meaning that this would be no mere customer deal per se. It'd be more like a collaboration between the teams. Because McLaren and Toyota, they do have a good relationship, even though they no longer use their Cologne wind tunnel. They were very long-term customers, and there's a very warm relationship there. And all the rumours about who is going to supply McLaren with engines, Toyota does crop up every now and again. It is quite a poetic and romantic deal, and it would give McLaren a pretty beefy semi-works deal with Toyota. But I don't know, this just seems really, really convenient. Not to mention, the person who posted this tweet is a Miyata fan and a Kobayashi fan. So I'm a little bit dubious about this. And also, the reason why Ritomo Miyata is in the news is because he just won the Super Formula title. That is pretty recent information, so it is going off the back of that revelation. And the Super GT session is wrapping up, so there's a lot of hype for all of those respective series. And like I said, the McLaren-Toyota relationship, that's been going on for a long time now. And also, Ryo Hirakawa, he's not a single development driver for McLaren. They've been collecting them like crazy lately, including the F1 Academy starlet, Bianca Bustamante. So McLaren do have a lot of drivers under their books, including Pato Award. And you may remember the whole brouhaha with Alex Polo. So uh, Zach Brown does like to collect drivers like their trading cards. But I'm just like, why would Audi sell to Toyota? I, I don't understand, because Toyota has been very dubious about returning to Formula One. They left Formula One because they kept throwing money at the project and not really getting much in return. You can check out Tomo's video about the history of Toyota and Formula One. It's a very interesting read. And the tweet implies that Audi is now having a similar sentiment to what Porsche had, really not wanting to invest in Formula One properly, and instead having a very convenient deal, which is what made Christian Horner bulk at the Porsche Red Bull collaboration and why it was terminated at the 11th hour, because Porsche wanted a controlling stake, 
but not really offering all that much in return, just wanting all the glory, and Christian Horner did not want to relinquish control. And besides, Audi has been very vocal in wanting to be in Formula One. Formula One has made a big song and dance about them being in the sport. And this three season transition that they've got from 2024 to 2026 is very sound and probably very cost effective. They are not throwing cash at something, trying to get into the sport quickly. It's a very measured and patient approach. Therefore, it will be a little bit less expensive. And I don't think that they would make a snap decision right now because they've only got a small stake at the moment. So I feel like this rumor, I don't know, I don't buy it. It's nice and poetic, but also a little bit too convenient and poetic. And if you want to know more about the Audi project with Salva, you can check out my video here that I did a couple of weeks ago. Next! Well, not quite next, it's somewhat related, and it goes back to the concern of who is going to be driving for this Audi Salva project? The Carlos Sainz thing has come back up again, as well as the continuing rumours about Nico Hulkenberg retaining to the Hinwill team that he last drove for in 2013. It has now probably been exacerbated after Nico lashed out at Haas over their lack of upgrades and their very weird path to them, saying that their decline and finishing in last place was inevitable. Him saying that Haas cannot really compete in Formula 1 if they keep doing this, that it has to be a wake-up call to try and change their approach, because Nico was really close to scoring a point, but their constant tired dead gremlins meant that he lost that 10th place to Ocon. And Nico Hülkenberg is the guy that's carrying the team at the moment because K-Mag, I don't know what's happening with him. I think he's been drawn the short straw. He's had the more unreliable Haas car. Nico was meant to go to Salba for next year, but Steiner took up the option for the extra year on his current Haas contract, so therefore that's been squashed. Maybe 2025 might change things because Nico is quite clearly unhappy. And Salba desperately want him back, because the time he was with them, he was very, very prolific with points. And they did lose him to Force India, so I can understand why the Salba group might want him back. So yeah, these rumours are somewhat reasonable, and the Carlos Sainz ones, they used to be quite credible. Carlos Sainz did feel like he was being neglected at Ferrari. But I think things are changing now, meaning that his move to Audi may be getting a little bit too far-fetched, because finally, Carlos Sainz is being taken seriously by the Scuderia. Fred Vasseur being more clear about Carlos's usefulness in trying to score points and getting Ferrari back to where they're meant to be. It's not the one-man show anymore of Charles Leclerc and then the other teammate is just like, yeah, whatever. No, Carlos is genuinely good. He is ahead in the points at the moment, again. He has now equaled points with Fernando Alonso, who started off the season spectacularly, but has fallen away. Carlos is very close to getting 200 points and maybe on course for P4 in the championship. That is pretty big. That's going to be one of his best finishes to any season. So it'd be absolutely bonkers that Ferrari get rid of him. Constantly saying that, oh no, we're, we're constantly thinking of Charles. Yeah, yeah, Charles is good, but Carlos is good too. They make a really good pairing, and I think it might be in their best interest to extend the contract a little bit more. This would be the silly part of the silly season, that Ferrari let Carlos go. So I feel like these rumours about Carlos to Audi... I don't really think they hold weight much more. So, okay, now next. Okay, this one was pretty wild, but I was able to quickly debunk it. This one was about the idea that Papa Stroll had just sold a big chunk of his Aston Martin stake to another party. This screenshot coming from the London Stock Exchange website saying supposedly that hundreds of millions of pounds had been traded off book, which meant that it was done privately, and therefore some of the stake had been reduced to another party. Whoa, 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 folks. Let me give you some clarification. You see this thing, GBX? What does that mean? Is that pounds? No. GBP, what you might be familiar with, is pound sterling. GBX is pence sterling. Therefore, this total of nearly a quarter of a billion pounds is actually pence, meaning that it was 2.5 million pounds in stock, which isn't all that much. It's not even 0.1%. And also, this is not the Grand Prix team that is in question. This is Aston Martin Lagonda, which is the car company that Lawrence Stroll also owns. The AMRGP Limited thing, that's a private company, so we wouldn't know who owns any stock in that. This isn't it, Chief. I just want to give you some clarification if you see it. But I think these are going to keep swirling because at the moment, Aston Martin aren't doing that well. But I think it's just mainly down to the fact they have done a lot of investing. They are currently at a loss because they've been pumping in so much money and getting the new factory online. I feel like that they will come back in 2024 a lot stronger than ever. But there is more to this. Could we actually see Fernando Alonso moving team or even retiring? Who is he going to move to? Well, they're all saying that Red Bull might be the place where he goes. I'm sorry, what? He might even retire? Well, um, 
You remember this guy, Albert Fabrega? He's very prolific on the Twitter sphere, and he does provide some very useful intel, as well as all of those upgrade photos, and he left a cryptic tweet implying that a particular rumour has got him very upset, him not wanting to believe it. We also see that Red Bull España does the shush emoji, capitalising on all the hubbub, saying that Red Bull Spain? Alonso's from Spain? Oh my god! Fernando Alonso would replace Sergio Perez at Red Bull, and Perez would go to Aston Martin in a driver swap. Uh, no. N no, 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 no. Granted, Checo going back to that team, the Silverstone team, where he was really, really good at carrying them and getting them loads and loads of podiums, that's a nice idea. That's a very nice, wholesome idea. But would Papa Stroll want him back because he was the one that pushed him out in favour of Sebastian Vettel? I don't know. And the thing that I really don't like is that Fernando is going to Red Bull. Sure, from a PR perspective, this would be great because everyone wants him to win a Grand Prix, getting his 33rd, whilst then also being teammates with the number 33 usually when he's not winning a title. That would be poetic. Kind of like how Nico Hülkenberg being his teammate, getting his first podium, would be nice, romantic, great PR for Christian. But no. Can you imagine these two working together? No. Of course, they do respect each other immensely, but when you put them in the same team, they are not going to be playing nice. Do you remember all the stuff that happened with Alonso and Hamilton being in the same team? Hamilton was a rookie, but was usurping Fernando Alonso because he was getting a lot of testing time, but no, no, not so much. And then we all had the hub about Hungary, about impeding, in the pit stop for qualifying. No! Verstappen would be 10 times worse because he's a three-time world champion. He now has more titles than Fernando. On paper, there are theories that Fernando really should be a four-time world champion, 2010 and 2012 being very, very close, and he just had really bad luck. But why would they go to so much trouble getting Fernando? It's just going to cause problems, because when Fernando does not get his way, he is going to tell you. He is going to be very angry about it. And besides, this would completely muck up their current theoried succession project by putting Daniel Ricciardo alongside Max Verstappen. Sure, Ricciardo left Red Bull because he was sensing the tide was changing in favour of Max, but now Daniel would be just grateful to be back in a top car with Max, who he gets on with. He'll be just happy contending for podiums and maybe the occasional win, being part of a top team, saying that he's still got it. And what we saw at Mexico means he is slowly getting that back again. He's slowly beginning to believe in himself again after all of the soul searching he's been doing over the last 12 months. That makes sense. Just put Daniel in the car if you're going to get rid of Checo. Or just keep Checo for 2024, see out his contract, then put Daniel in. Don't put Fernando in there, that's just silly. It's just going to cause drama. Although, mind you, a lot of people would like that drama, and Red Bull want positive PR at the moment after all the stuff that's happening with Checo, and Fernando in there, everyone would like that. But at what cost? I'm sorry, this is just a really silly idea. It's not even funny. It would just cause disaster for Red Bull. And besides, Fernando is quite happy where he is. He is not really expecting much in 2023 from Aston Martin anymore. They're not really fighting for anything, according to him. They are now focusing on 2024 and testing out particular parts and procedures ready for that next season. Can you imagine 12 months ago, Aston Martin scoring over 200 points in a single season? seven podiums in a single season? Any team would be happy with seven podiums. And Aston Martin got them, quite convincingly. They weren't just lucky thirds, they were second places. This is really, really impressive stuff in their pursuit for title glory. It's on track at the moment, folks. So don't be too harsh on Aston Martin. They're not washed, they're just tired. They will be back next year, so those retirement rumours, I think they're completely bunk. Fernando wants to keep going for years and years and years. He's got a multi-year contract. The team have no problem staying for as long as he wants. They're quite happy. They've even got podiums and all this glory, even though Lance Stroll is dragging them down quite a bit and they could have had more, but it's a lot more than they had than last year. So it's something. Uh, it's definitely something. He's got a good place as the team leader of Aston Martin. Why would he want to give that up and be potentially the number two to Max Verstappen? Uh, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. Fernando Alonso is number two to no one. Out of all of these rumours, none of them really seem absolutely concrete that I'm going to be going, yes, I am going to die on this hill and believe it to the end. Much like how there was that one time that Formula One wanted a super team at Red Bull and was encouraging them to hire Lando Norris to partner Max Verstappen or even Charles Leclerc. There's more context here, but... That's silly too.